No chance Fallout 5 comes out at the end of the generation. Fallout 5 will be like next generation because Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out after Starfield, which is going to be like four or five years. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm going to press X to down on that one. Hellblade 2 Senua Saga from Ninja Theory has been in the works according to new information since late... This game looks awful. Like, it literally is a fucking walking simulator. 2017. Five years later, and with most games taking upwards six years to complete with global slowdowns, Hellblade 2 may not... Like, bro, I think it's really funny. Like, I saw a bunch of people who would typically be like, Oh, you know, it's just another Sony walking simulator. All of a sudden, they're excited for this type of shit. <laughs> you know what they say. Keep that same energy. I don't know. So, Brit with the two, the Phil Spencer effect was his funniest. Oh, yeah. Or the one where he, um... The one where he tried to compare Spider-Man to Forza Horizon 4. <laughs> like, those two games have anything to do with each other. Oski Woski with the two, I love a Republic okay. Commando sequel. And and then yeah, I don't know if they would do that or not. You know, Disney doesn't like anything extended universe, so I think it'd be cool, but highly unlikely, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I'm a gamer. Raging Bull with the five QuakeCon right will be her. the only good show this year. Problem? Ah, uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't know what they're gonna show off. I guess it all depends on that. The Butch is toxic with the two. Can you put on the Mafia 4 trailer? And eh, probably not, man. I mean, I don't really want to watch trailers on stream. Y'all can do that in your own free time. Like, I kind of want to go through these, like, fucking, uh, prediction videos, personally. Griffin X2, the 729 show seems like it will be awesome, not gonna lie. Summer Games Fest was, yeah, trash. I don't know. I mean, maybe it'll be good. I don't have high hopes, personally make an appearance at the Xbox Game Showcase, but actually a couple days earlier at Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest. It's right. time for Xbox to show combat gameplay that has been curated from hand-to-hand -hand training with the Star Wars lightsaber expert. And the real stunner could be that Hellblade 2 Senua's Saga is ready for a release date in December of 2022 or immediately after the holidays. I mean, shit, it's been in development for... Six years? Income. It better be. Riven XC with a 729. When he compared Crackdown to God of War. <laughs> Fucking no, man. Or, yeah, like, what was it? You know, people will be playing God of War for 20 hours, but I'll be spending hundreds of hours in Crackdown 3 multiplayer dropping buildings or some bullshit like that. The Coalition is working on Gear 6, but there is a rumor and leak oh. circulating according to Aaron... Please, no. And Greenberg's announcement that the Coalition is working on three game projects. One is a supposed IP from Marvel or Disney that may have speculated to be Realistic either Mandalorian, a third-person action-adventure game, but it could be anything. We just know that it is not a Gears game. The third project is the Xbox-era leaked Gears Marcus Phoenix Collection, fully built. Thank God, man. Actual good Gears of War games are coming back built in Unreal Engine 5 with ray tracing and improved overhaul visuals for Xbox Series consoles and finally all of this on PC. Expect the Coalition to play a major part in the showcase with a possible Gears remaster release date of holiday 2022. Forza Horizon 5 smashed records with well over 12 million playing in the opening month and the visually unbelievable open world racer will showcase its first of two <coughs> DLCs. Forza no, will uh, get a new map area to explore, that, uh, race, and test your skills. You know, Typically, playground banks off of a weather-related theme, and with Mexico already numbers, seeing massive you know, dust and rainstorms, I mean, we can only wonder what the new expansion uh, will be. Our backs are on a massively dormant volcano, okay. leading us up okay. to sister mountains in a okay. ring of fire. Perfect. Bro, how um, dope would it be if they added like a I mean, mode where you had to like drug run? Answered everything. I think <laughs> actually we'll just have be to fucking fire. As well. Like you have cops chasing uh, you and you gotta like fucking uh. We want to pull the trigger on. Get a shipment, yeah. something like. I honestly that'd be pretty fun. I know they won't do it because it'll, it'll be like oh, controversial, but dude, that shit would be fun as fuck. Playground's other team, the RPG studio working on Fable, is reportedly behind schedule working through their new reimagining of the fantasy series. What a shock! 
Leaks and reports have flooded in recently that Fable has been in the works since early 2018, and that gives it well over four years in development. The RPG team is fine-tuning the world and mechanics, and Fable is likely set for 2024, and two years from now. So we can expect Xbox of, to showcase uh, for the first time like, an in-engine look of the world, environment, and visuals under the proprietary engine of Vortitech, taking on an open-world action RPG. Xbox wants us to know that Fable is very much alive, but not quite ready. Machine Games is working on two- Yeah, bro, the El Chapo DLC, I'd be down for that. ...major games, and according to leaked information, both could make an appearance at the Xbox Game Showcase. The famed Lucas Games' Indiana Jones action adventure is well in the works with enough to show an in-engine trailer or proof of concept, as the game is likely slated for 2023 or 2024. Indiana Jones is also most likely a third-person action-adventure game despite Machine Games' expertise in first-person shooting mechanics. Indiana Jones is set in 1943, just after the events of the first Raiders of the Lost Ark, in the prime era of his adventures. The other game is Wolfenstein 3, the end of the new trilogy for BJ Blazkowicz after his horrifying transformation into part machine. Wolfenstein 3 will take us into the final push to the end of domination of post-World War II and close out the visceral combat and according to Bethesda's track record, we could see a gameplay showcase and surprise release for Wolfenstein as early as holiday 2022. One last shot. That would actually be good. ...and surprise that insiders are buzzing about is from the first-person pioneers, id. It is reportedly working on the final entry in the new trilogy for the Doom reboot and finding a one-up for the incredibly torturous Doom Eternal. We are unsure if Doom is ready to be shown or even teased, but the curveball for id has insiders sharing info on a full next generation... Yeah, I don't think this is going to be shown. ...reboot of the famed Quake. Quake has been in dire need of the Doom and Wolfenstein treatment for modern shooters, and th they got the mod. What the fuck are you talking? Bro, they literally got rebooted like what five years ago. This one has not been vetted, but could likely be a surprise for the Xbox Game Showcase. Quake was rebooted, like rebooted. Games that won't make an appearance are Perfect Dark. Everwild, Elder Scrolls, and State of the K3, as some of these studios have publicly run into slowdowns, setbacks, or asked for extra time for development. Looking at what Xbox typically shows, with over 30 games, and most of them exclusive to the platform, we can expect to see far more gameplay than normal, and more release date windows, even some close to 2022 and early 2023. As the drought of delays comes to an end this year, expect massive surprises and a couple of new yeah, game announcements Quake Champions. outside of- They already tried to reboot Quake. What the experts have leaked or data mined. Either way, after an excellent start for Xbox this generation and a very underwhelming 2022 so far, there is a lot to look forward to for Xbox in the coming months and an incredible roadmap of games that will make a historic impact, not just for Xbox, but for pushing all platforms to bring us more games that we can play. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. There were a ton Yeah, I mean, almost none of that shit's coming out anytime soon. All right, let's see. Let's see what dealer. Let's see if he's hyping this shit up. Here we go. Game sh Xbox just Xbox invited me to their press only media event, the event that is meant to provide an additional layer of context to, to everything that you are probably currently hearing about, as well as everything that you will hear about after their big but that Why does it sound like his nuts are in a fucking vice? It's the showcase. Yes, little old me, and guess what? I've got some information here regarding xCloud. We've got some Game Pass update information. Okay. They are talking that and so much more, including their acquisitions of both Zinimax and Activision. So, let's get into it. Look, I'm not going to start the video by sounding like some kind of infomercial here. I'm just going to get... Yeah, right. Give you what I got from the virtual press briefing from my perspective. I'm an expert. I don't want to sound like a fucking infomercial. 
literally puts an info <laughs> fucking infographic for the fucking Xbox ecosystem. Bro, this is literally a fucking ad. Xbox fan, this is what Xbox said, and this is what sticks out to me personally. Oh now, I'll be showing God. some informational material provided to me by Xbox on screen. I do have some bullet points for you. So, if you end up liking the video, tell a buddy to maybe subscribe if you're interested in all the latest news from Xbox. Bruh. Now, I want to start by talking about Phil Spencer. He was the first one in the virtual briefing, and he started out by saying that he loves the amount of momentum that they have right now. The sales of the consoles are doing extremely well. In fact, he said they can't keep them on shelves. He also said that having an amazing first party studio organization is fundamental to xbox what they want to do who they are as of this moment he confirmed once again that there are over 100 million people that play on xbox he also said that pc game pass is up 300 percent compared to last year but that's nowhere near where they want to go they have bigger goals than that. The Xbox team that came out afterwards confirmed that the Activision deal is a big, big part of their game strategy going forward. And gee, why would that be? They also confirmed that the Xbox Fortnite cloud deal is not a one-off. They will be doing more of these games through the cloud. Matt Booney and Sarah Bond then came out and said they want to put as many Activision Blizzard titles in Game Pass as soon as possible. They also spoke on a new way that they are enabling developers that are still stuck at home to have a better, more cohesive development environment, something that they have been struggling with since the pandemic began. Getting developed. Yeah, man, sitting on a computer at home sure is tough compared to sitting on a computer at work. Developers used to developing games again the way they were as if they were standing right next to one another. This new game development VM is uh, basically aimed at helping developers more cohesively develop projects. It combines a lot of development tools into one ecosystem, one environment, and it allows them to more easily work together. Cloud-based game development is definitely something they've been working on. Now, Matt Booty and Sarah Bond also talked about Project Morecraft. It is very much real. It is very much paid demos. Yes, this this is a uh, yeah yeah it's paid demos uh basically what they're trying to do is put in some kind of demo experience i don't know if it's just for e3 or in general going forward in the future they weren't super specific about this but basically what it is is game pass ultimate members will be able to play these vertical slices of maybe even e3 demos but again i don't care what demos they are putting them behind a paywall i personally don't agree with that i didn't agree with it when sony did it i won't agree with it now paid demos uh are not ideal though they yeah it defeats the whole purpose of a fucking demo if you have to pay for a fucking demo it's not really a demo i don't know so then I'm all well with the two. People are overhyping this. Also, what the fuck's ray trace? It's like a lighting method, basic. I don't know. If you want, you can look it up. Basically, it just makes reflections look a little bit nicer. Long story short, it's kind of overhyped. Medicated kid with the five. I can't stand to hear Taylor Gaming's voice. Jealous little snake. Yeah, bro. I don't know. Dealer is just a breed of his own. Griffin XC with the 37 Xbox canceled Combines crap because of his. Oh yeah. Well, I don't want to say it, but yeah, the rice consumer comment. But they allowed Deer, even though he said, yeah, the bundle of sticks. Yep. Let's get what person do you refer Had better frame rates, and it's for all you. There we are. And all of its beauty. Oh. 
Let me know if it dies. Had better frame rates, and it, for all you fucking faggot ass P counters, it had higher resolutions. And you, I didn't hear you saying anything about that then. It was all about, oh, oh well, we got more exclusives, or, um, you know, Sony lets us lick their nipples occasionally. It was some stupid shit that never made sense. But now that you don't have any games, it's all about resolution. You're all hypocrites and retards at that. Your mama smoked an ableist slur. Crack when you were inside. I don't know what. Had better frame rates, and it, for all you fucking faggot ass P counters. Now literally his fucking channel is dedicated to counting fucking bees, <laughs> bro. He did say that money can go towards developers and all this other stuff. Look, um, I just don't think it's worth it. I don't, worth, I don't think it's worth crossing that line. Pay demos. If you want to release demos, release them for everyone, not just people in Game Pass. Let me know if you thought it was a good idea when Sony decided to throw paid demos into PlayStation Premium. And let me know what you think about Xbox basically doing something very similar. Again, when speaking about the success of the Xbox Series consoles, they are doing great. They confirm they can't keep them on shelves. That's right from Xbox. They also confirm that Xbox all... Access is a smashing success. So successful that they are expanding the amount of countries that can take advantage of Xbox All Access. They also talked about more Game Pass PC and, of course, improving performance there, Windows 11, you know, the future of gaming and how they appeal to PC gamers. Something I'm personally not too interested in talking about. It's PC related. I'm a console guy. This is pretty interesting. They also confirmed that you'll be able to stream your own games as well as X Cloud titles. So if you are a a Game Pass subscriber and you own games but you can't stream them, well, uh, if they are supported via the cloud and you own it, you will then be able to stream it anywhere as part of Game Pass Ultimate. Here's something else that is pretty interesting. They confirmed that Samsung TVs 2022 and up, will have an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate application installed right now. Yeah, I knew that was only a matter of time. I'm surprised it took this long. In the Game Hub, and I actually saw how this work. It is very, very simple. Go into the Game Hub, select the Xbox Game Pass app, connect a controller or device. I'm surprised they haven't just patched this through to all Samsung TVs. And boom, you've got streaming on your TV. There was only mention of Samsung, there was only mention of displays of 2022 and newer, and that is all. But keep in mind, there are several rumors of an Xbox puck or streaming stick that will enable any device to stream Xbox Game Pass applications, similar to a Roku stick or an Apple TV, all that digital content plus that entire game's library from xCloud and, of course, maybe even your own personal... Yeah, isn't Netflix buying Roku? I'm pretty sure that, like, got leaked or some shit. And, like, Roku's stock shot up like a motherfucker. Stash after I got up to you later this year. If you watch one of my last videos, you know Design Labs were teasing something. Well, they've spoken on this, and they may have more information going forward. But as of right now, this is what they say they're doing there. Not only are they enabling Design Lab controllers to be shipped in 11 new territories, but they're enabling more colors and design elements. Not quite. Oh, my God. It's a console customization I'm hoping for, but, uh, hey, one can dream. And of all the interesting things in this briefing, which trust me there were plenty of things that were not interesting the last thing would be Todd Howard coming out and saying a few things of his own. First and foremost, he says they are putting the finishing touches on Starfield he mentions the Xbox Series X and S by name, saying he is very excited to leverage the hardware inside, the hardware they need to actually build a game like Starfield he is leveraging those systems to the max. And they also talked about Bill Spencer's 16 times the detail, man. In the past he talked about Starfield being the most played Bethesda game ever. And this is going to tie back into Cloud because my kind of uh, my assumption based on the press event and how that ended was that Starfield would, of course, logically have a day and date release on Cloud as well. So you were not just looking at Xbox PC, you're looking at every device that can stream anything. Well, that'll have access to Starfield. And it's a big part of how they plan on making it the most played Bethesda game ever. But yes, the takeaways are primarily. Bro, I would not not want to stream a game like Starfield game pass related to me not just game pass related but primarily the fact that 2022 and beyond model samsung tvs will have an xcloud app built into the game hub is seemed very simple very elegant very easy to use the fact that there are going to be paid demos in xbox game pass this is not a good thing in my opinion let me know yours down below again if you're going to have demos just make them free for everyone there's no need to put these things behind a paywall the fact that xbox all access is doing phenomenally well and the fact 
fact that they cannot keep Xboxes on shelves. It's very rare to hear those things directly from Xbox. You go into an article and somebody